Who the hell is this? Riley's father struggled to his feet to open the door. The cops were standing in the doorway. They reported that his son stole an expensive car, tried to evade detection driving around the city, hit a granny at the crosswalk, and fled. This time, he faced a real prison term. I have no idea where this idiot is. The cops warned the guy that he had to let them know in case Riley showed up, and they left after that. The men watched them from the window, and as soon as they left, he ran outside. Of course, he knew where to look for his careless son. The boy was hanging out with his friends in the garage. They were looking for you, idiot! He told Riley that he urgently needed to lay low until things calmed down. They saw an advertising banner near the garage. It was a great opportunity to hide the boy in a summer camp, and it was absolutely for free. The man looked at his watch. They almost didn't have any time before the departure, so they ran to the bus station. The bus was already parked there, people were sitting in their seats, and the kind driver was packing the suitcases. What is this piece of rag? But Riley's father grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and threw him inside the bus. Everyone was ready, and the bus set off. The man waved his hand after the bus. He remembered how he was raising his son alone. His wife abandoned them when Riley was just a little child. She found herself a rich old man and drove away to live by the sea. When the bus left the city, the teenagers were having fun, joking and getting to know each other. Riley, too, got into a conversation with his neighbor. Austin seemed not as stupid as everyone else. Suddenly, the bus began to shake. The blinds went down on all of the windows and the driver released the steering wheel with a calm face. The panic began. This is one of the camp's rules. No one should know where we are. Even the camp's workers are not aware of that. The bus quietly continued to go on autopilot. It was already quite dark outside when the bus arrived at the location. Counselor Cheery was crying on the parking lot. <laughs> the camp's director died! The guys didn't understand anything. How could this happen? Cheery asked them to follow her. They entered an old building with a creaky floor. One of the guys began to check whether the dead man was real. But suddenly, the director woke up. Everyone squealed and hid somewhere. Ah, oh, you, an old witch. You forgot again that I come to life every night at midnight exactly. The guys burst laughing. It was a cool show the old man came up with. Only it wasn't fun for Riley. The stupid and reckless teenagers were enjoying the stupid jokes and that director was acting like a clown. <laughs> hey! Here's the most important rule of the camp. You have to behave well in order to survive. It excited the teenagers even more. They all started fooling around. George kicked Tim. That's it, I will die now. The fight broke up. The counselor tried to pull the fighters apart. Oh no, please stop, or there will be trouble again. The director looked at them with his frowning face and said that there wasn't a single person who had ever gotten out alive, because everyone behaved very badly. Riley got completely bored at this meeting. He quietly sneaked out of the principal's office to examine the camp and see what he could possibly steal. He saw a dim light in the first aid post and peeked in the window. The nurse and the cook were doing something weird, and Riley couldn't understand what they were occupied with, and as a result he revealed himself. The cook ran to the window, but there was no one on the street. Rats, probably. Riley could hardly catch his breath after such a fast run. He noticed some graves just behind the fence. It was a cemetery. The boy got scared, and he ran back. The counselor took the guys to their dorm. The whole setting was like in a horror movie, but everyone enjoyed this atmosphere. Riley told Austin about the cemetery, but the boy reassured his friend. Oh, don't worry, everything is just a decoration here. Everyone felt tired after a long journey, so they quickly fell asleep. 
Riley tossed and turned in the bed for quite a while. He remembered all the moments his father was drunk and refused to give him the money for sweets. All of his friends had their own pocket money, and he had to wash cars in order to earn at least something. Sometimes, arrogant drivers refused to pay at all. Once, a local hooligan muffin demanded the boy to give him half of his earnings. Obviously, Riley said no, threw a bucket at the offender and ran away. Back in those days, Riley was still a noob, so he chose to hide from the bully. He was doing it for quite a while until he learned that Muffin had mysteriously disappeared. No one knew where he was. But Riley remembered. He saw the bully's face on one of the graves. What the hell? Suddenly, Riley heard a strange sound. He looked around, but everyone was asleep. George was peacefully snoring on the next bed. Suddenly, these black, ugly hands started crawling out of his bed. Riley hid under the blankets, while the hands grabbed their victim and dragged him inside the bed. Riley was shocked. Austin, Austin, wake up! He told him everything he'd just seen, but his friend was so sleepy he just turned over to the other side and muttered that it was just a bad dream. Riley felt terrified to go back to the bunk, so he just sat down by the bedside table and looked around. Someone's voices resounded from inside the nightstand. Riley jumped away. Was this monster that kidnapped George sitting inside of it? But no one emerged from the nightstand. Then Riley opened it and saw a long passage inside. The voices were coming from afar. He felt curious, so he carefully climbed inside that nightstand and began to crawl along that terrible tunnel. A nail was sticking out of the floor. Riley hurt his hand, but that didn't stop him. He continued to crawl further. In some places, the tunnel split in different directions, so the boy had to randomly choose where to turn. As a result, he got lost. But fortunately, the voices resounded closer and closer to him. From the distance, he saw a room that resembled a torture chamber. George was laying on the bed, muttering something, while some kind of energy was pumped out of his stomach. Little, nearly invisible people sat inside the jar, screaming. Riley noticed that the bully from his childhood was also there. Suddenly, some girl entered the chamber, and everyone got silent. She looked around the room suspiciously and started sniffing like dogs do. Riley hid and decided to wait out. But at the moment he decided to check again, the girl vanished. He wanted to call George, but she appeared right in front of his face. Riley quickly crawled back. Traces of his own blood helped him to find his way back. Riley stormed out of that nightstand. It was morning already. Wake up, everyone! Some strange girl kidnapped George! Everyone was sleepy and annoyed. They were getting out of their beds. Rosita checked the nightstand. There is no one inside. But there was a tunnel. I crawled through and saw her killing George. Everyone started laughing. Nobody believed Riley. Hurry up! Samantha is waiting. You look so beautiful. Come on! Samantha handed out jars with souls to the camp staff. Well done, you guys. You did a great job. Everyone devoured their tasty meals with great appetite, while the souls were begging for mercy. You were told to behave well. The counselor was in a hurry, and a fuss rang over the squad. Everyone laughed at Riley. She came to inform the children that it was the time to have their breakfast. On the way to the dining room, Tim asked the guys to help him because he could not see well. His glasses were broken. Darina tripped him and the poor guy ended up writhing in pain on the floor. But it was even worse in the dining room. Children found something alive in their food and that something was moving. And only Tim didn't notice anything at all. Darina grabbed her blade 
and went to complain to the cook. What is this poison? Oh my my. She decided to check the contents of that pan, grabbed the hot lid and the black hand rapidly dragged the girl right into the boiling liquid. The teenagers came running to the noise. Darina was gone. The cook told them that the camp took the girl for misbehavior. <laughs> Darina is just about to get cooked for your dinner. Suddenly, one of the kids felt sick. He was in pain and the guys decided to take him to the first aid post. The nurse was very unhappy. She threw poor Tim on the couch and kicked everyone else out. Everyone loved the adventure and only Riley realized that it was all real. He decided to show that cemetery to everyone and it was only near that dreadful place that they noticed that it had gotten dark outside. Nika said that she didn't feel scared at all. Then Rasita found a dead rat on the ground, crept up from behind and quietly put it on Nika's shoulder. The girl panicked, knocked Frank over and grabbed hold of the gate. She was hit by electricity and thrown backwards. Everyone burst out laughing at what they've seen and nobody noticed how the mask fell off Frank's face. Riley helped Nika to get up and took her to the hospital. The nurse was busy with something. They asked her to dress those burns on the girl's hands. The disgruntled woman took out some smelly ointment while Riley sat there examining the room. Where did Tim disappear? He was taken by the camp. Didn't they warn you that you need to behave well in order to survive? Austin and Rosita were having fun. Rosita jumped off the swing and decided to ride down the slide. But it seemed that the slide started eating the girl. She was screaming for help. Austin was still having fun. But Riley and Nika came running to the screams. Rosita was eaten by a slide. Isn't that a great idea? And the slide seemed to be happy as well. It's been a long time since it ate. It served her right, that stinker. Riley put his hand over her mouth and asked her to behave well. The counselor appeared. She was quite surprised that the guys were still alive and told them that the previous group didn't get through the first night. But Riley only smiled and reassured her that they were doing all well and offered the guys the chips that he had with him. They went to the corpse. Riley shared his chips with everyone, made some drinks and brought a TV set. Nick and Austin quickly got used to this kind of service. And while they were both resting, he quietly got outside to search for a way out from this hellish camp. He found a ladder and tried to climb over the fans. But the higher he climbed, the higher the fan stretched. He gave up on this plan and decided to build a catapult, flew over the fence, landed on the tree and returned back to the camp. But when Riley entered the building, there was no one there. These hooligans rummaged through other people's lockers, stole all the sweets and just vanished. He ran following the footsteps. The candy wrappers led him to the director's house. There, he saw the guys playing with the coffin. Nika climbed inside and Austin slid the lid back. Screams resounded from the inside. The coffin began to shake. Riley tried to open that lid, but nothing really worked. He then grabbed the hammer and started pounding with all his might. The coffin fell apart. But there was no one inside. Austin hmm. thought for just a second, but then quickly got excited. <laughs> all in all, such a cool trick the director had invented. He really loved this devilish camp. The director appeared. How come you're still alive? He invited the guys to watch his favorite movie. They all sat in an empty hall. But the director couldn't adjust the filmoscope just yet, so the movie wasn't starting. Austin felt really bored, so he began to swing on a chair, toss popcorn at the director and shout 
that such a long wait was really pissing him off. Riley tried to calm his restless friend, but his actions provoked Austin even more. The guy even fell to the floor. The cabinet behind his back was just about to drop on the boy, but Austin did a somersault to the side. Stupid camp! I tricked you! But the camp turned out to be tougher. Suddenly, the black hand appeared and dragged Austin somewhere. Riley was simply shocked. He was afraid to move. The movie started. It was a wonderful sunny day. At the bus station, parents accompanied their beloved daughter, Samantha, to a summer camp. All the teenagers said goodbye to their folks and tried to seem nice. But as soon as the bus departed, everyone began to behave inadequately. The driver didn't pay any attention to that. Some pudent hooligans began to kick harmless Samantha's backpack and the weak girl just couldn't say anything against it. They continued to bully her in the camp as well. They called her names, pulled her hair, and finally kicked her out of their company. Samantha tried to complain about bullies to the counselor, but the woman just shrugged her shoulders and did nothing. The girl became a real outcast. Those idiots threw bread at her in the dining room and took away her delicious food. The cook didn't stop this mess, even though he saw everything. Then, the bullies pushed Samantha into the pool. She began to choke. The camp's director was passing just at this moment, but he only asked the hooligans to not trample the lawn. Unfortunately, Samantha's troubles didn't end there. At night, the hooligans smeared her face with toothpaste. She woke up and started crying loudly. The bullies got scared that she might attract attention, so they sealed her mouth with tape, dragged the girl to the laundry, threw her into the washing machine, and flipped the switch labeled Turbo. When they decided that the girl was punished enough and tried to turn off the washing machine, nothing worked out. It continued spinning so quickly, then it began to smoke and sparkle and the hooligans just rushed away. The laundry was on fire. It was impossible to extinguish the fire and the flames quickly spread to the neighboring buildings. Panic broke out. The crowd tried to escape from the camp, but the gates were locked. It was the morning already when the firefighters arrived but the camp was already gone. Now the SCP camp appeared in different locations of Roblox and lured people with special discount offers. If the teenagers behaved badly, the camp killed them and Samantha took their souls. The deceased camp workers also helped Samantha and received their share for it. The SCP fund has been hunting that camp for several years but so far to no avail, because the camp always managed to disappear. The movie ended, Samantha sat next to him and cried. You are the first one who survived. Riley offered to help her. Samantha gave him a note for her parents and allowed him to leave. He walked to the gate and the camp let him go. Riley calmly walked out and when he turned, the camp was already gone. He got to the highway where a truck driver picked him up and drove him to the city. The guy found Samantha's parents' house and handed over her note. The poor couple recognized their daughter's handwriting. Then he went to the police station to turn himself in. But luck was on his side. That old woman whom he hit with a car survived. The doctors managed to restore her broken body. And the car that he stole from the deputy turned out to be bought with stolen money. And while Riley was in that camp, the deputy was imprisoned for a bribe. So now Riley was clear before the law. He decided to become a decent citizen after that story.
He started helping his father around the house, met volunteers, and made a shelter for homeless animals from his garage.